Hello and welcome to Mrs. Ballard's class. Today we're going to be covering topic uh, 1.5, which is determining limits using algebraic properties of limits. So our lesson objectives for the day are that the essential question is how do you apply the algebraic properties of a limit to a graphical stem? So what the stem means, and I'll point it out when we get to a question, is how does the, the question start? That's the question stem. And we're going to talk a lot about that because we kind of have three or four different stems that we tend to work with throughout calculus. And that I can apply algebraic properties of limits to a graphical stem. Remember, you can always, always, always pause the video. You can always rewind and go back. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. All right, always write your last name and first name up at the top. Oops, sorry, going through craziness to get it flipped here. All right, so writing my last name and my first name, preferably in pen. All right, um, and you have your essential question written down. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the properties of limits. Um, so in these properties, B and C are real numbers, meaning they're like negative uh, 2, negative 4, they could be 0. 0.5, they could be 1 half, they could be 1 third. Those are real numbers. Um, and N is a positive integer, meaning it has to be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, and then also let F and G be functions such that the limit as X approaches some value C, so some number of the function equals L, and the limit as X approaches some number of G equals K. Okay. Um, so a scalar multiple, so what a scalar multiple looks like is if we have the limit as x approaches c of b times f of x, so that's the scalar multiple, it's just a number. So if I take the, if I'm going to take the limit of that, basically I take the limit l that we got and I just multiply it by that b, so it's b times l. Um, if I have a sum or a difference, if the, when the limit as x approaches c, of f of x, so I could either be adding or subtracting the two functions together. So basically I would just add or subtract their limits together because k and l are standing for the limits of those functions. Um, if I am multiplying the limits together, so the limit as x approaches c of f of x times g of x, surprise, surprise, I would multiply the two limits together. And quotient, quotient means division. So limit as x approaches c of, and I'm going to really squish, f of x divided by g of x equals, you guessed it, l divided by k. And then finally, we have the power, okay? So the limit as x approaches c of f of x, and I'm going to use the power m over n. Okay, um, and I don't think, oh, they said real numbers. Oh, I think I've got a typo in there. I think it should say M and N. I might be able to fix that on yours. Um, equals L to the M over N power. So whatever power I have. And the, remember, powers can be square roots too. Because um, remember, the square root of whatever my number is, it can be written as X to the one half power. So that's also indicates your square roots. All right. So um, we're going to take a look at these ones here. We're considering the graphs of the functions f of x and g of x given below, and we're going to find the following limits. So um, basically, I need to find the limit of each one. Um, so the limit as x or as x approaches one of f of x, I'm going to look at my graph of x. And I'm going to look at my left and my right, and I notice that they're both going to the same x value of 2. So I'm going to take 2 for that one. And then I'm going to go to G and look at what's going on at 1. So as I go from the left and from the right, it looks like my X value is approaching 1. So 2 plus 1 would just be 3. All right. And then my other graph here. Um, it looks like we got to go at 3. So it looks like G is first. So I'm going to go to G from the left and from the right. And I know that seemed really weird to draw that, hasn't it? Because this is to technically the X values to the left. So it looks like they're both approaching the 0. 
And then on f of x at 3, you're coming from the left and from the right. Oh, I would guess that that's like, I don't know, 2.5 or something like that. Oh, sorry. That's actually... What's going on? I am at the wrong place. That's what's going on. I didn't go to 3. Okay, so from the left and from the right, and then we know that the y value is actually negative 2. Um, and then 0 divided by negative 2 would just be 0. Okay, the limit of a composite function. So um, the limit as x approaches, and it could be any variable here, they happen to use an a this time, limit as x approaches a of f of g of x. I know it's probably been a while since we've talked about composite functions. Um, so but remember, it's one of a function inside of a function equals f of the limit of as x approaches a of g of x. So basically you find the limit as x approaches g of x and then you put that into f. Provided that the limit as x approaches a of g of x equals k is and f of x is continuous at x equals k. So basically you have to have a continuous function, okay? Um, so I'm going to read through this part here. Um, so while this, well useful, this rule can very easily be misinterpreted by assuming its converse is true as well. It is certainly not the case that if f of x is not continuous at x equals k, or if the limit of g of x does not exist at x equals a, then we cannot apply the property above. We can simply not determine anything conclusively about the limit as x approaches a of f of x, f of g of x. So basically what that paragraph is saying is that it doesn't mean that if it's not continuous or that um, g of x doesn't exist today, it doesn't mean it won't have a limit. It could still have a limit. So we can't, we're not, we are not conclusive. It could happen, but it also could not happen. Um, similarly, we run into some issues with our standard limit properties. Recall that if the limit of as x approaches a of f of x equals l, limit as x approaches a of g of x equals k, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x equals l plus k. So the problem with that rule is that it does not address the cases where either both the limit as f as x approaches a of f of x and the limit as x approaches a of g of x fail to exist. So what happens if they don't have limits? Um, we finally rely heavily upon our original statements that basically the right-hand limit, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit have to be equal to L. And that will always work for us 100% of the time. All right, so let's take a look at these functions here. Um, so I'm going to, so, so the, we're, I'm going to rewrite this actually a little bit. So we're, we know that that's equivalent to f of the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug the 1 in there. Okay, so it's going to be the f. Uh, so I'm really, so I'm going to use what we call direct substitution. I'm going to plug that value in. Actually, I'm going to look and see what's happening. Never mind, I'm not using direct substitution. Ah! Okay, um, so I'm going to 1. Um, so it looks like as I'm approaching 1 from the left and 1 from the right, my y value is in fact 0. So I know that this is 0. Um, we could look at our graph really quick. We'd still notice that x is continuous at 0, so we're good there. And so I'm really looking for f of 0. So f of 0 happens to be the y value is 2. Okay, going to learning this pen a little bit better here. Okay, um, let's look at the next one. So we need to do f of x times g of x as, as they approach 2. So my limit as x is approaching 2, so from the left and from the right, ooh, we notice that that does not exist. So um, this one is d and e for the f value. Then I'm going to look at g as I am approaching 2. So 2 looks like it's about right there. It looks like it's at about 1. 
But the problem is does not exist times one doesn't really work. It's just does not exist. Okay. All right, and then f of f of x. So I'm gonna rewrite that. Let me erase my graphs. Okay, so I'm gonna write it as f of the limit as x approaches, oops, sorry, approaches zero of the f of x on the inside. So how, what's going on is, as x approaches zero on f of x? Does it come at it from the left, come at it from the right? My, X, my Y value is going to two. So I'm looking for F of two. F is continuous, it looks like at two. At two. Oh no, it's not, look at this, it's discontinuous at two. So um, as I'm coming at it from the left and from the right, I have a discontinuity, so I know that that actually um, does not exist. Um, we could, however, give, Um, the just the left-handed limit it looks like um, so I could find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x and that definitely looks like it's at 0 all right let's take a look at this a little bit more of the same different graphs okay so we're given some functions below find each of the following limits so as x approaches negative 1, so if I'm coming from negative 1 from here and from here, it looks like we have that um, 1 from the left, 1 from the right. Okay. Oh, we're doing this a little separately. Um, because of that break in the graph, we're going to approach this a little bit differently. So. We're gonna look at the right, because we're having these breaks in the graph at negative one, so let's look, we're gonna approach this a little bit different, okay? So I'm gonna look at the limit as x approaches negative one from the left of f of x, plus the limit as x approaches negative one from the right, sorry, the left of g of x first. And we're gonna figure out what that is. So as I'm coming at it from the left, it looks like I'm getting a negative one. And as I'm coming at this one from the left, it looks like I'm getting a negative two, which overall gives me negative three. Now I'm gonna look at it from the right side. So as I'm coming at it, the limit as X approaches negative one from the right of F of X, plus the limit as X approaches negative one from the right of G of X, so as long as I'm approaching the same thing from both sides, I'm good, right? So if I'm coming at it from the right, I'm going to negative two on that one. And from the right, I'm going to negative one on that one, which equals negative three. So what do you know? My right-hand limit and my left-hand limit are actually equal to each other. Um, so, uh, that means that the limit overall, so the limit as x approaches negative one of f of x plus g of x has to equal negative three. All right, let's try this again. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, let's try this again with the other graph here. So at one this time. So it looks like, um, at one, I have a discontinuity there. It's not continuous there. And at one plus one, so this is really looking at g of one plus one, which is g of two. There's also a break. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the right and the left hand limit again. So the limit as x approaches one from the left of f of x plus the limit as x approaches one from the left of g of x plus one. All right, so let's take a look at what that means. So as I'm coming at this one from the left, it looks like I'm going to two. And as I'm coming, okay, now remember this one here is g of one plus one, which we said is really g of two. So I'm looking at g of two from the left and it looks like I'm going to two. So that limit is four from the left side. So the limit as X approaches one from the right of F of X 
plus the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of g of x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to come at f of x from the right. It looks like I'm at 2. And g of 2. So I'm coming up here, and that looks like it's at 3. So that is 5. So what do you know? This does not exist. So you would want to say that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x plus g of x plus 1 does not exist because my right and my left hand limits are not equal to each other. And it's not bad for you to write that down if you want to write that information down about the right and the left not being equal to each other. All right, more of the same, just bigger, uglier graphs. Okay, so um, this one just says we're going to do a straight composition of functions here. So let's do that first. Um, so I'm going to look for g of 4. So I'm going to my graph of g, and I'm going to look at 4. And it says that my four at 4, it's 6. So I've got f of 6 equals. So now I'm going to go to 6 on the f graph. And I know it's tough to kind of read, but it looks like it's at 1. So my answer for that one is 1. Okay. Okay. So on the next one, and this is the kind of, this one's going to be that crazy thing with the something being missing again. So I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite it as f of the limit as x approaches 4 of g of x. Okay, so um, the limit as x approaches 4 it looks like from the left and from the right, it's equal to 6. But if I look at the graph of f at 6, it's not continuous. So all I'm going to be able to find is the limit as x approaches 6 from the left of f of x. And from the left side, we know that it equals 1. All right, we're going to do some more composition here. So let's look at this one. Let me erase. Okay, so a g of 0. So I go to the g graph, I go to 0, and my y value is negative 2. So I have f of negative 2. I'm going to go to negative 2 on the f graph, and the value where it's actually got a point is at 1, it looks like. So this equals 1. And then this is going to be f of the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. All right, so I'm going to go to the g graph, and I'm going to look at what's going on on both sides of 0. So on both sides of 0, it looks like it's going to negative 2. I've got f of negative 2. Okay. And again, we know that at negative 2 on f, it looks like, oh, negative 2. Negative 2 on f is not continuous. I was looking at positive 2. Um, so I'm just going to come at it from the f is not continuous at x equals negative 2. Okay. Um, or... Okay, so I'm going to come at it from, this is at 0. 0 is on the right side. So I'm going to come at it from the right side. Okay, so I think I figured this out a little bit better. So the limit, we're going to come at it from the limit as x approaches negative 2, but from the right side this time because, and this is why, okay? Um, where is 0 in relationship to that, to this? It's on the right side, so I'm going to come at it from the right side which means that my value is 3. All right, let's look at um, E. So I'm going to do the limit, or G of the limit, as X approaches 6 from the left of 1 minus F of X. OK. Um, so 
F, so we're only coming at it from the left side. Um, so I'm going to go and evaluate, because remember, I can evaluate these separately, right? Or that's one of our properties is we can take the limit as X approaches 6 from the left of 1 minus the limit as X approaches 6 from the left of F of X. So this is just going to be 1. And then this right here is, let's go look at the graph. So F of 6 from the left. Okay, let me erase the scribbles on the graphs. Um, so 6 from the left looks like, and I know it's super tiny, it looks like it's at 3. So it's 3 minus 1. No, it's not. 6, for, I looked at negative 6, didn't I? I apologize. Okay, looking at 6 from the left is at positive 1. All right. So positive one, which means we're really looking for g of zero. And g of zero, we actually have. We know that that value is negative two. So I can just write that this one's negative two. No goofiness. All right. So this one, I'm going to approach them both from the left or the right side. Um, I know the first one's just going to turn out to be 15. I need to, oh, x squared. Okay, um, when I put in x squared 3 from the right on this one, 3 from the right, looks like it's at 2. not what they got. All right, I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back to it, okay?